Good morning, or after, actually good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Hope some people come on board and get started with us. It is Sunday. It is about, let's see what time it is, 1.20. So it's afternoon. I got to sleep in for the first time ever, guys. We'll wait for a couple people to come on board. When we get to 15, I'll go ahead and get started. It's going to be a good day. We have no children here at the moment. At the moment, we have no children. My husband's gone. I'm here by myself, and the dogs are barking because they think they're on high alert. When I get to about 15, I'll get started talking. If somebody could send me a message and let me know that my comments are working. I just need somebody to send me a hey, good afternoon, something, so I know that those comments are working so I can answer any questions as we get going, okay? Hey, hey, whoop, whoop. It is Sunday, y'all. Tomorrow's Monday, though. We ain't going to get too excited. All right, Miss Heather, good afternoon. All right, thank you, Miss Heather, for that. That way, at least I know everybody is it can hear me. Um, I got some comments going, and we're going to get started. There's Miss Ashley. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am doing wonderful. Thank you for asking, Miss Ashley. Bianca, hello. Y'all, I'm doing pretty darn good. Steroids are an amazing drug. I have never felt better. Of course, I make you feel like Wonder Woman anyway. <laughs> hey, Miss Christy, welcome. All right, guys, we're past 15. We're going to get going. Hey, Miss Linda. Hey, Heather. I am so glad to see y'all. We're going to be doing an alcohol ink tumbler today, okay? Somebody's going to say, we've already done one. But, y'all, we have reached about 43,000 members, um, and we're continuing to grow. Look, don't have any lipstick on your teeth. We're doing good, girl. Look. <laughs> I had to check them. I said, let me go in here and check my lips before I get going today. I do have cotton mouth. Hey, Mr. Trevor. How are you, hon? Janet, Rhonda. I'm so glad y'all are joining me. We're going to get going, okay? Now, somebody's going to say, you've already done an alcohol ink tumbler. It's been a while, and I'm trying to start out with the basics and work our way up so we can get a following. Because, like I said, we've had a little change in our home, um, so we're going to be doing... Um, starting to build cups. So somebody's going to say, why'd you do a basic glitter cup? I had a lot of messages like that, and I want to tell y'all why. We have so many new members. Hey, Shane, Tony, Karen, I'm so glad y'all are here with me. When we did this basic cup the other day, and I'm going to show you something in case somebody missed it. This was the tumbler we did with a lot of chunky opals, and then the stars and snowflakes that went around in the dark blue. And then, of course, I haven't cleaned my rim yet. Look at this big old piece of epoxy that stuck. Somebody was asking how I would get that off. That's going to take me about three minutes, but I will do it on the camera once again for those new people, okay? Got a bunch of people joining us. Hey, is it Pamela and Karen and Barb and Julie? I am so glad y'all are here. So we're going to go over one more time how to clean a rim because this is a perfect cup to go over, okay? Let me tell my husband I am on a live. And um, there we go. Sorry about that. Thought he would know. But this is a tumbler we did a couple days ago. We're going to do an alcohol ink tumbler today. The reason we're going to do that today is I want to build on these cups. The reason being, there's so many new members, so many people new at doing this craft. I just want to let y'all know, hey, Lauren, Leanne, Gina, hey, y'all, whoop, whoop, it's Sunday. I want to be able to give y'all cups that you can build on. So, for instance, the glitter cup we did the other day, you could turn this into... Um, trying to think all the different types. You can do a peekaboo with this. You can do, um, what's the one with the white? I'm drawing a blank this morning. There's so many different cups you can do from a basic glitter cup. Or you can just leave it as a glitter cup and put a name on it, diagonal, and be done with it. As far as alcohol inks, there's so many different colors that you can do. I'm just going to show you some basics. We're going to do a tumbler similar to this. This is my everyday cup. Okay, I call it my galaxy cup. If you can zoom in real close, I'm going to show you how to get these really nice, let me find some good ones, some glitter lines in here that are done just a little bit different. Okay, show you how to do that. I'm going to tell you some real good information about alcohol inks if you are starting out new. The Milky Way. Thank you, Tony. The Milky Way. You can do a Milky Way with a basic glitter cup. Let's say you get a cup you're just not happy about. Um, Peekaboos are great because your glitter's already done. You just covered up. Hey, Sherry. Sheila, welcome, y'all. I hope you're doing good. So we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff today. It's going to be about an hour tutorial. I hope you'll hang in there with me. Um, and like I said, we're building. So our next tutorial, since I got 171 on here, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what we're going to be doing. Sheila, thank you. I was feeling kind of rough this morning. Last time I come on live, I had lipstick on my teeth. So I didn't, look, I got my lashes all glued on good for you. They ain't going to be standing straight up. I ain't got no lipstick on my teeth. 
We're doing good. All right, let's get going, guys, okay? Next week, actually, tomorrow, because I told you I was going to start this week doing Monday, Wednesday, and Friday tutorials. I will go on in the morning and let you know what time we're going to do it that day, okay? And then I'll give you another 15-minute heads up before I come on board. But this is a big package. I had to order more, y'all. I ran out. Let me use my tea. Hold on. Oh, I don't have to. Anybody seen the glitter cups that have the stripes? You got stripe, stripe, stripe. They're all different sizes, but they're perfect. Okay, this is what you use to do that. Now, there's some creative. There's going to be a lot of no noise. Hold on. You can be really creative, and some people are doing these differently. What I have here are different sizes of two-sided tape. I get them off of Amazon. They're super cheap, about five bucks. I'll give you a link for them. But it has like a paper cover on one side. Let me pull a little piece off. So a paper cover on one side, super sticky. And when you peel the paper off, the other side of sticky is exposed. So I'm going to show you how to use these to do the perfect stripes on the stripe, like fall. The fall tumblers are a wonderful idea for this. It's also really good for Fourth of July cups. Okay, so we're going to do this Monday. Reason being, I just want to show you some new styles. There's a lot of requests for different tutorials. Hey, I'm, I'm missing everybody. I, I see Philomena, Amy, Andrea. Um, I see everybody on here. Lord, Kate, welcome. So we, we've got some really cool tutorials. The reason I didn't start out with anything super hard is we have a lot of newbies. Some people are just starting out making tumblers. I am working on the tabs at the top. Well, actually not at the top. If you go down past the first announcement, you're going to see a bunch of tabs and there's going to be new ones. And also at the very top of your page under the tumblers or us and the picture, there's a little scroll thing that says announcements, watch, um, watch parties, all kinds of things. I'm adding a ton of stuff to units. Okay, you may have seen a few things pop up. Nothing's in there yet. I've got it all written down. I just got to transpose it to the page. So just look forward to that, that we're going to have um, preferred vendors, uh, preferred epoxy vendors, molds, mica powders, um, people who, who we have personally tried as a group. That would be LaDonna, the creator of the group, and then the other, we've got Roger, April, Laura, Help me. LaDonna, La, Yvonne. Is that all of us? LaDonna, Roger, April, me. There's Amy? No. I'm missing some. Yvonne. Yvonne, if I didn't say her name. But anyway, we all have come, to come together and compiled these lists for you guys. It's going to help you out a whole lot. We don't care if you still ask the same questions. If you want to ask what kind of epoxy do you use 42 times a day, it's going to get approved, okay? But we're just making it a little simpler for some people to find. So remember, units is being updated, and then we're going to have more in the block tab section, okay? There's also another lady doing lives. Y'all try and catch her if you can. She's doing a great job. She does a lot of fabric tumblers. So if you see her on, just go to the top three dots on the top right-hand side of your phone or your tablet and hit... Um, that you want notifications for all their lives, okay? We also have a YouTube page now. It's just for Tumblr's um, Ask All You Like page. It is me doing them. We're going to try and add other people's if they agree to that. But it's all the tutorials I've done here. Nothing new or nothing different. But it's under Bridget Hicks Reese, okay? Let's see. Cup vendors, yes, we're going to have where we, where we have actually ordered from so we know that they're legit. Um, let's see who else is on here. Miss Sarah, Miss Mandy, Miss Linda, Miss Kay. Well, we are on here. We're going to have everything that we can possibly think of that you need. I did add a list for the newbies as far as what you would need to start out. And we have some great helpers who have helped me remember certain things that I forgot. So I appreciate your input. If anybody has input on certain things and you can't seem to add something somewhere where it needs to be, hey, Candace, please send me a private message and I will make sure it gets on board, okay? All right, one more thing and we're going to start and I'm going to tell you what we're using today, okay? Listen, guys, I don't know if you have heard me promote Final Sand with DIYepoxy.com. I'm just showing you they do they make epoxy. This is their artisan epoxy. Um, but they make something called Final Sand that's being used for matte tumblers. And I want to throw this out to you. Their price is a little pricey, but the product is great. If you go to Amazon because you think you're going to save a few dollars and try to order Final Sand, please, 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 I'm giving you good information because I've done it myself. Check the seller. I put a note on the top of the page this morning. I couldn't tag it into announcements to be at the top, so I hope everybody saw it. But if you do not look at the seller and make sure that it's DIYpoxy.com, 
It may be a really long name from another country. It's a scam. They're also doing it with cup turners. I posted that. They're pink tumblers or pink turners and wooden turners. So anytime you're buying anything off of Amazon, if you're buying something for your home, look at the seller and make sure it's not this five line ridiculous name that you can't even pronounce because it's a bunch of letters. It's a scam. They've already been reported to Amazon by hundreds and hundreds of people and I didn't read into it before I ordered mine and I, Amazon's trying to refund my money now. So just giving you that information, okay? What tumblers do you not use, LOL, from Amazon? I use all the tumblers. I order tumblers from Stainless Steel Depot, um, Puzzle Tumbler, I, everywhere. I've, I've got tumblers from Walmart. I've got the powder-coated cups. I'm just going to tell you, you have to prep and sand any cup. If it's pre-painted, got the perfect line at the top, it's powder-coated, and you think you're going to prep that cup, put some glitter on it, put epoxy on it, it's going to work. It's not. I promise you guys, I've done it. I gave it to a customer, and it peeled off in one big sheet because I didn't prep my cup. That's when I first started out, okay? Hi from Germany, Gabriella. Thank you, thank you. The YouTube channel is Bridget Hicks Reese and I think I've got about 10 or 12 videos on there and I'm adding more, but make sure you hit subscribe and it'll bring up um, any new ones that get posted in case you missed them, okay? All right, Miss Lena, we're gonna get going. Let's start. I've done enough talking. I've lost some people. But y'all, we're gonna have a good time and I've got some good information for you, okay? Alcohol tumbler. This is a 30 ounce skinny. I did get this at Stainless Steel Depot. I think you can see most of the cup there. All right. Um, I have other cups that you can use. Y'all, this is their new 30 ounce. This is the one I did the water slide on. They're 30 ounce fatty. Amazing cups. But you can use a Walmart cup. I'm trying to think if I got one real handy. Y'all, I got crafts everywhere. But I've got the Ozark tumblers. They work great. If you, by chance, let me get one for you. I've already pulled all mine off. Does anybody know the black plastic piece? They have added it to the 30 ounce tumbler. Okay? So, you've got a 24 ounce tumbler from Walmart, Ozark Trail. You flip it over, look at the bottom of it. It's got a big plastic rubbery piece. It's supposed to be non-skid for people who don't like to decorate their cups. Which I don't know who would want to do that. But anyway, okay? What else are you doing to that fatty? You just held up. This fatty, this right here, um, I have somebody who's interested in buying it, but I'm not real sure. I haven't heard back. But this one is basically going to have um, epoxy put back over it. I'll, you know, do my do my work to it to make it super smooth. And I'm either just going to add a name to it diagonally, or I'm going to put on one side, maybe it's cold outside, and then um, put a name on it if somebody wants it. If not, I'll use it at a craft fair for just advertisement and show people what I do. Okay, where would you recommend me to buy the full kit to get started? Tumblr and all. Honestly, people say go to Amazon and do it all, but I think you're going to be better off seriously because some of the epoxies with those kits aren't great. Is or do everything separately. Okay, that's what I would do personally. Get you a tumbler off of Amazon, but get your glitters. And I've used glitters from everywhere, guys. Okay, I've used Walmart glitters when I started. Hobby Lobby Michaels. We're actually going to use a product from Michaels today. Um... But your premium glitters, and when I say premium, it's going to be your glitter vendors, cover. All right, this is an example. This is a glitter from Michaels. This is called Caribbean. It's a beautiful, chunky mix, okay? Um, and then I've got, let me just pull one out from up here. I'm just going to grab something. Let's see what I got. I'm just going to throw these out here. I have many companies. Let me find one more for you so you can see the difference, okay? I want everybody to see the difference in these things. Hold on. And I apologize. I didn't have it handy, but this was a spur of the moment question. And these are some super fun. Okay. So these are like child's and child's glitters. Okay, guys? They actually have shapes, but let me put this one up. That's a shape. I got so much of their glitter, I don't know what I pulled down. So this is acorn. Okay. I got a little bit of a glare from the window. I may wind up closing one of those things. Y'all are going to have to tell me if you can see. Okay. If you are asking questions and they get by me and I don't see them, please know I'm going to go back and answer everything. I'm not skipping over you. Don't get discouraged with me because they come in really, really fast. But I promise after the tutorial, I'm going to go back and answer all those questions for you, okay? This is Child's and Child's Posh. It's gorgeous. I'm trying to get the glare. Let's see if I can get the glare out. There's a little bit of glare. Can everybody see that, how pretty that is? It's a beautiful color. 
So this chunky works great for Michaels. You're probably gonna have to apply two coats. This glitter that's chunky from Childs and Childs. I also have some from Hero Glitter. This is not chunky, but this is their Nova. It's a beautiful color. She All her glitters come in shakers now. I just happened to order this early, early before she started. And this is Raven by Hero. This is the Fine Mixes, okay? So this is from LaDonna's page. She's a creator of the group. These are her glitters. These will take, and the Childs and Childs will take one layer of glitter, guys. One. You don't have to do it twice. You don't have to go back and, and hit something you didn't miss, unless you don't get any epoxy anywhere. If you have a bald spot and you get a lot of epoxy, it's not going to stick no matter what it is. But just keep in mind, premium glitters... I don't promote one person in particular. I do everybody. If I've tried you and I love your products, you're going to hear me talk about it. Glitzology is another one. Let me show you some Glitzology, guys. I'm in love with this color. It's called Marvelous. M-A-U-V-E-less. It's like a purple chunky mix. This is from Glitzology. This is her cotton candy. Let me see if I can get it to be seal. From Glitzology, it's kind of like a pink opal. Beautiful. This is Miss Joy's glitter. Okay, so please know I use everybody's. I got Micah Mania over here. This is her Autumn Nights. All these glitters are going to take you one coat to cover your cup versus doing two or three coats. Some people may know what I'm talking about, okay? I'm hoping to see how the top of the tumbler is finished. Do you go all the way to the top, and how do you clean and keep it sealed at the top? We are going to talk about that, but I'm going to make you wait till I get done with the alcohol ink tumbler, which is right here. does not take long to do. I'm going to get this reversed. And then we're going to clean the top of this tumbler that you're asking. And I'm going to show you when and why you do it at a certain time. Okay? So hang in there with me, please, Miss Judy. Don't leave me, okay? I'm going to show you. I promise. And it works great. So, alcohol ink tumbler. You can use this to build on or you can just use an alcohol tumbler um, just like it is. So we're going to kind of mimic this one. I'm going to show you some spots where I messed up on this cup. I'm going to purposely... Do a little streak of a mess up on here. See if y'all can catch what I've done. And I'm going to introduce you some alcohol inks, okay? What I used for that tumbler, just so you'll know. And I use everybody's inks, okay? I'm not preference to Bria Reese, to Tim Holtz, to Pinata. I like Pinatas a little bit because they're very vibrant. But I've got a couple new alcohol inks I want to show you. You can find them at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, etc. You can find some of them on Counterculture. Um counterculture.com. I'm actually looking at something. I apologize. I should have looked at it before. Um, and then I'm going to show you some things you need to watch out for. Okay. I actually saw a cup and I think that's what happened to the cup. And I just want to show you something. I'm kind of worried about a couple cups I sent out. The top was a little bumpy on both of them, but thought it would be okay. I hope they don't have issues. All right. So let's get started and we'll talk about that when you're cleaning your cup rims. So we're using pinata. This is, um, I have to look at it. It's magenta. Senorita. Magenta. I'm trying to get it to focus in. It's trying to watch me. Okay. We're going to do the Sapphire Blue by Pinata. And y'all know I got a tremor, so I can't hold these things still for, <laughs> for very long. All right. There we go. Sapphire Blue. We're going to use a Baja Blue. It's just a little lighter of a blue. I'm trying to hold my arm really still and hope that it doesn't shake. And you're going to use a Blanco. Okay. Those are the four main colors in this cup I showed you a while ago. We're going to play around with a few other um, inks that I found. Actually, a friend of mine from the same community I'm in makes these. It's from Sparkle Spirits. She is a preferred vendor. We just recently added her. She um, has some really pretty glitters, so I'm going to use her Pavarotti Pink. The reason these are a little different, listen, they're a metallic, okay? They've got some pearl hue to it. Let me see if I can get a piece of paper and show you what these look like before we use them so you can see the difference, okay? A lot of people are like, what's the difference in a metallic and a regular ink? Y'all gotta pardon me, I got glitter everywhere. So we're gonna trim this down. I'm gonna see if you can see these. It's just got a little bit of a shimmer and shine to it, okay? I'm gonna show you a regular pink, if I can find my top. Just so you can see, and it's really hard to see on camera, but you'll probably be able to see it on the cup itself. But I'm going to just show you these two real quick so you know. It's metallic what the difference looks like, and I'm hoping you can see this. Let's see if I can do this. So you got some shimmer, and my hands are just a mess today. A little bit of shimmer to that, 
and absolutely just color to the pink, okay? So, metallics usually mean there is some type of a shimmer to it, okay? Whether it's with mica powder, a glitter, whatever they're doing. But if you hear this noise, and this, and I'm going to show you what these are, anything by um, Tim Holtz, Ranger, um, Pinata that says pearl, that's a metallic. This is really important, okay? Um, Christy Taylor says they are so pretty, and I'm offering a coupon code for a discount right now. Hey, Miss Christy, I was just talking about your stuff. I hope you heard. Y'all, she's got every color in the book. I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, this is Aphrodite purple, super, super dark, and then she's got this bright blue. She's got all colors. You just have to get on her page. But any of these that shake, you can see that in the bottom. Can you see it? When you shake it, it gives you the shimmer, Okay. Um, and I'm not just promoting her. I'm promoting everybody. You've seen already I've promoted three or four people. But um, going back to the pearls. Anytime you see a pearl or you hear this noise inside your container, it's a metallic. Okay? Have to shake these up really, really well to get all the sedative. Let me find the other one I had. This is a wood grain. Can you see all that in the bottom? This is called hmm, smolder. And sometimes it won't shake the first couple times because your baby's stuck in the stuff. But when you shake it up, all that shimmer goes into the ink, okay? Pearls and metallics, anything that has a BB in it, whether you get these from Christy. I shake up everything, y'all. If I don't have the BB, I still shake it up just to get all the colors rounded about, okay? Um, metallics, you have to be real careful with. If you add too much heat to a metallic, it's super sensitive. You still have to add heat to get your alcohol inks to work, okay? But if you add a lot of heat to your metallics, you can actually scorch them. So be very careful of your heat. Let's see, Christy is asking which, what was the one's name? Hmm, I'm thinking you're talking about this one. It's called Sparkle Spirits, okay? Sparkle Spirits, Christy Taylor's business. And this is a Pavarotti pink. That's what I put on the paper. Now, y'all ready for some more information? Let's talk about additives. Has anybody ever wondered what the additives are for? I know that I've always asked about additives. Like, what's the difference in the additive and the alcohol ink? Okay? Additives, this is called an additive. I'm going to put it up here. This is a Bria Reese product. This is a silver glitter. It's called silver additive. If you look at it from the side, you can see everything in the bottom. It does not have a BB. But when you shake it up, you can really see the color in that. It's, what you do with this, I'm going to show you on our paper again, okay? And then I'm going to pull it up. Try not to get it on my cup. I can take a pink that's normal ink, add it to my cup. I'm not going to put the tops back on these because we're going to be using them. Take the additive and drop it right on the color. Oh, you're going to be able to see this good. I'm going to run it just a little bit. And then I'm going to get my flashlight so you can see a little better. So this is my dot. Can you see the shimmer that comes out? only where the additive is. Basically takes, and it kind of beads up a little bit, but it's a beautiful color. I wish you could see that really well. Okay? So we've got a, a glitter added to it because it's an additive. You can do that with white. I hear somebody. My son's here peeking in the background, um, which means my grandbaby's here. But anyway, um, so additives will change anything you have. If I wanted to add a white additive to this pink, it'll lighten the color. Okay? Additives are really important. We do need those. Let's see. Um, Tumblr love. I have to get the alcohol ink to cure. I'm so excited and hopefully learn what I'm doing. You're right. All right. We're, we're getting there. I promise. So we talked about metallics. We talked about regular inks. We talked about um, the, the Sparkle Spirits, her alcohol inks that she has. Now, this is an alcohol ink by Bria Reese. Everybody see that? Right here on the top says, let me get it to zoom in so you can see it. Alcohol ink, and this is called an orange. This is really important. This is an ink by Bria Reese, and it is called Dandelion Yellow. The difference in these two is, this is an alcohol ink, this is a watercolor ink. Same kind of bottle. I found these on discount. They were like 75 cent a bottle. So you know me, I threw every one of them I could find in the cart. I didn't look because I saw the bottle was the same. Came home, got my, prepped my cup, painted my cup, 
got ready, got my epoxy on my cup, and I dropped this on it, and it repelled. Ran right off like you had rain X on your windshield. Watercolor inks, I still hear them back there. Watercolor inks do not work on tumblers with epoxy. It repels it. So if you've ever had a cup, you dropped ink on it, and it ran off, and you are like, what in the world happened? I guarantee you picked up watercolor just like I did. Okay? Really, really important. Just think about it. 75 cent was a great deal. I can use these on other crafts. I can use them um, painting. I'm real big into doing piggy banks for kids. Works great on piggy banks. You can do uh, canvases with it. Just doesn't work well with epoxy. So keep in mind, regular ink or watercolor ink. You have to have the alcohol ink. Let's see, one more thing. These are two more. I found this at Michael's, y'all. This is called Jen, Jane Davenport Incredible Ink, and this is a limeade color. Look at that beautiful color. But when you put it on, it turns out like this. I did it to my skin. It's kind of an oily base. It works, but it does repel kind of like it's a watercolor, but it does stain. It doesn't come out this color. I wanted you to see. And then these are some other. Y'all may have seen these Armor Art bottles, beautiful neons. You have to mix these with epoxy. If you put it directly on your cup without mixing one drop with epoxy, it's never going to dry. I've done that. Okay? I just want to share different things with you when it comes to your cups. Now, let's get going. I know y'all are tired of hearing me talk, so we're going to get going. Okay, guys? What you're going to need is your two cups for your epoxy to measure with. Okay? You have to measure these, these, this epoxy. And we're going to do two separate cups. What we're going to do in the two separate cups is I'm going to take a little bit of the white ink probably about two or three drops and just place it in my cup if this one's actually stopped up but don't worry no harm no foul because I have another one right here in the front of me somewhere my little alcohol bin is right in front of me let's see let's just try and get it out I've got so many inks it's crazy so y'all are gonna see me squirt this over here in the trash can <laughs> I say that right I'm just going to clean this up a second, guys. I probably got something inside of it at some point. Now it's going to run like crazy. Huh. Interesting, guys. So, I will take this off and clean my cap later. I just want you to know what I'm doing. I'm going to drop very, very, very minimal because I've taken the cap completely off. You just basically need a drop or two. One. Oh, that's way too much. But it'll still work. So a little bit of white in the cup. The other thing we're going to use, you're going to be amazed at this. And we're prepping all this for our cup. We're just getting ready. I got this at Michael's. Now a bunch of people have been asking about this. Y'all, I've been using this stuff since COVID first hit and they locked everything down. You couldn't order anything but online. Okay. Where did I get my white alcohol ink? I actually ordered it off of Amazon and then there's several, several people selling alcohol inks now. Um, I know Mycomania for You has alcohol inks. Um, there's a lot of great companies. They're going to be in the prefer preferred vendors list. And if they do sell alcohol inks, I'll kind of add that to the side so you'll know, okay? But this is called embossing powder, guys. It's used for stamping. I'm not saying that glitter isn't good. Look, I use several, several, yeah. Talking to the dogs or me? Okay. This is a powder by Mycomania for You. This is Miss Yvonne Perry's company. This is her diamond dust. I use this as well as the embossing powder. So I just want you to see this has to be that extra super fine to work the way I'm going to use it. This is a beautiful, beautiful color, okay? But I'm going to use this embossing powder. This is a vintage blue. Got it at Michael's. It's used in stamping, so you'll find it in the uh, stamping section, okay? Your son keeps popping his head in. Scholar, they see you. Just stick your head in here so they can say, hey. But well, uh, well, duck, you, you were only 6'6". I had to tell you something. I'm sorry. Well, duck, so they can see you. Say hey to everybody. Hey, how's it going? That's my baby son, y'all. Okay, the keys are on my key ring. They're in there. All right, I love you. Where's Landon? Yeah, I'm taking him with me. All right, tell him give me kisses. I love. Well, just tell him I love him. I'll give him kisses okay. later. All right, embossing powder. Sorry, guys. You know how it is when family pops in. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta love them. Okay? Did you not love my prize I won on the giveaway by Childs and Childs? I did, Sheila. I'm sorry. I just read a bunch of stuff. And I want to make sure I addressed you. Okay? 
Brittany, he does look like his mama. We put makeup on him when he was like five or six. He looks just like me. He said, don't say that. I want y'all to see one more person and we're going to get going. Look. There's my little Sorry. There's my Landon. I'm going to get my kisses real quick and then we're going to go, okay? Come get kisses. Sorry. He's fine. I just don't want him to fall in this mess. Look, they got my baby. Give me kisses. Say bye-bye. Mwah. Got the best kisses in the world. I didn't want to interrupt you. All right, you going with daddy? Okay. Be careful. Hold my hand. Good job, bubby. You gonna get your truck? All right, guys. We're back to normal. Sorry about that. You have to love on some babies. Have to love on my babies. So embossing powder. It's basically a glitter with a powder to it. This is how I'm gonna get the glitter on my cup that you see in these sections here. Okay. I mix it with a with epoxy. Okay. I'm gonna stick this in another cup. If you use too much of this, the powder base to the uh, um, embossing powder tends to make your epoxy super thick. I like mine a little bit thick. So I'm doing about that much embossing powder, maybe a little more. I'm a fanatic about glitter. Hmm. Glitter and pink. I wonder why. Right? All right, so we got some embossing powder. You know where I got it. You know it does work because I'm going to show you that, okay? These you're not going to need in anything. You're just going to drip those directly on your cup. So all I'm going to do is get my caps off and get ready. So I am ready for you guys. Okay. Because the next step, of course, is going to be mixing some epoxy. Got my little measuring cups. Let me tell you something about epoxy. I love to share everything with you, and I repeat this over and over and over again in all my lives. If you are doing epoxy, you cannot eyeball this, guys. I've been doing this a couple years. But if you eyeball your epoxy, you're going to wind up with a sticky cup. You need equal parts of A. And I'm actually using, this is Fast Set. This is the blue label. Let me show you what I got. Let me set this down. They have two different Fast Sets. Okay? They've got a purple Fast Set, which they are currently discontinuing. It's on sale. This is by Counterculture. So if you want to use the purple, it's still UV protected. It's still a great product. It is on sale right now. Counterculture's blue Fast Set is one with the added UV protection that's like lasts seven times longer, okay? So they do have two fast sets if you're wondering what I'm using. I'm using the blue. I should be using all my purple up, but I'm using the blue today, okay? But I use everybody's epoxy. I have ALE, which is a little extra. I am almost completely out of it. I've got KS Resin. I've got Artisan, Artisan by DIY Epoxy. I've got the Artisan resin from counterculture which is the long drying time it's called medium viscosity y'all i use everybody's stuff i don't care whose it is if it's a good product i'm going to use it so i'm looking to see how much i got to part this first part and then i'm going to add my other one i just put these in fifo bottles to make it a little easier because my hands shake guys so i'm just going to look and see where i'm at i am going to mix way more than we need i always do because if you haven't watched my tutorials, I want you to see how fast Fast Set sets up. Doesn't mean it's cured, it just means it's dry. Um, doesn't mean that it's ready to ship. Please keep that in mind. Most epoxies take 24 hours to cure if they're Fast Set, but 72 hours before you should really put it in a box and ship it. Only because of external temperatures, if it's super hot, your cup can get soft in the box in, in transit. So I've mixed 15 and 15, which is gonna come out to 30 mLs, which is ridiculous for this cup, okay? I'm just going to tell you. You should only need about 10 milliliters or 10 cc's. I'm a retired nurse, so that's where all that comes from. You should only need about 10 to cover this cup for what we're going to do. I always mix more because I like to let you see what it does after you've mixed it and how long it takes, okay? So all I'm doing is scooping this into a little bigger cup so I can mix. I'll wipe these out later with baby wipes if you haven't figured that out yet. And a lot of you I know have been making cups a while. Save your medicine cups. Wipe them out with um, diaper diaper wipes or butt wipes for babies, baby wipes. And they come clean, spotless, okay? Somebody is also going to ask me about epoxy and how you stir it. The instructions say for fast set to stir a minute to two minutes slowly until you get rid of all the white looks like strings it's almost like stringy looking okay i want to show you these so you'll know i do have other types of stirs i got a silicone spatula when i'm doing big molds okay 
I've got the metal stirs. I typically forget to clean these and they're stuck to my workspace. So that's the only reason I'm gonna use the, the popsicle sticks, okay? I've got them both in there. Now I stir my epoxy fast. And somebody's gonna say, why do you stir it fast? It causes bubbles. Wooden sticks cause bubbles because they aerate the epoxy. Um, guys, on some of these cups, it's not gonna matter. Um, it will matter on this one because you'll be able to see micro bubbles in this alcohol ink, but I'm gonna show you a couple ways to get it out and a couple ways that I've used, and you can try any of those. Or, if you're doing a glitter cup, it doesn't matter if you have micro bubbles because you're covering that. I had a ton of bubbles on the glitter cup I showed you earlier, and it did not matter once I covered it. But if you're doing a flat cup, solid white, solid black, solid red, you have got to make sure all your bubbles are out of your epoxy because that's where it really, really shows. Okay, they make epoxy stirs out there that are automatic put the cup under it and this little thing stirs your epoxy for you. It does it super slow. You can also take this and put it in a bowl with warm water and let it float. The heat will kind of separate it, but remember, fast set, you do not have a lot of time to be playing with it. You get about 15 minutes of work time with fast set. So you have to be kind of fast with these, okay? Get me a sip of drink. I got cotton mouth, okay? <laughs> Alright got my Grinch cup today. I didn't make that cup. Somebody made it for me, but I've been making a ton of them because Christmas is a coming on as fast. All right. I'm going to stir this up. I want to make sure I get both A and B mixed together well. You stir how you want to. Just remember micro bubbles stink if you're doing a solid color cup. Glitter, it really doesn't matter. Alcohol inks, they will show, so you have to work with them just a little bit, okay? My hand shakes also. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Like, it's not too bad until I hold something still, but I take medication for it, but it's pretty bad. Crystallac. I have tried Crystallac, Sheila. Um, I liked it. It didn't like me because my house is so cold. Do I wear a respirator? That's by Angela. Some people wear a respirator. I'm going to be honest. This has no real smell to it. Um, this is counterculture facet. When the smell occurs is typically when these mix and it's setting. Um, you'll have a chemical reaction when A and B mix together. That's what causes it to get hard. But just smelling this, there's no smell. When it starts to cure is when it's rough. I don't wear a respirator. I have one and a half lungs. I've told people this before. I had a little injury. But I do wear a respirator when I work with acetone. It seems to bother me really, really bad as far as my breathing. All right, what green, what color green? Filters. I'll have to get back with you, Denisha. Send me a private message that you're curious about this. Again, I didn't make this cup. Somebody made this for me, but I make them now. Um, and it's a beautiful green. It's just a resting Grinch face. Um, but somebody did make that cup for me. It is not my cup. Hey, Miss LaDonna. There's Miss LaDonna, guys. That's our creator. I was talking about your glitters earlier, showing them some Raven. And what else did I show them? I showed them another one. I have so much stuff on this craft table. It's scary. Oh, I was showing them Nova, too. I showed them Nova. All right, guys. This is mixed super, super well. Okay. It's all together, not clumpy, lumpy. We don't want any clumps. That means you haven't stirred it well enough. Set it down and get my glove on, okay? I work with one glove when I'm working with epoxies because I don't like to get the epoxy all over my alcohol inks. And I have a tendency to do that, Okay. All right, we just still got a bunch of people looking. So remember, we're not using all this epoxy. I did this for you guys, okay? I'm just going to use about 10 mLs or 10 cc's if you're medical. I have a hard time not saying um, cc's. I'm just going to put very little on the cup. Somebody's going to say, that's really not enough, and you're right. I want to put a little bit more. You can put epoxy on any way you want to, guys. Some people dip their finger in it. Some people do this. Some people go like this. There's no right or wrong way. You do what you want to. That's way too much. So I'm going to rub this on the bottom. Now I am somebody now who epoxies the, all the way from the rim to the bottom. I used to tape mine at the bottom and the top about a half inch. I don't do it anymore because I finally figured out the tricks to the trade um, to where it wouldn't peel off my epoxy or my glitter. And it just takes some practice, guys. Some people have been doing it all the way to the top and the bottom since they started, and that's wonderful. Um, but you do what's comfortable for you. I just got to a point where I felt like people were paying so much for the cups that I wanted to give them the full cup effect. Freddie, whoop, whoop. That's right. It's Sunday. It's, don't make me break it out in the cabbage patch. Mm, mm, mm. All right, guys. Let's get this epoxy on. 
all right? If it starts to get where you're not getting good coverage and you've rubbed this, this cup to death, and I have not rubbed it to death, but I'm just gonna show you, you can bump it with a little bit of heat, okay? Not a lot. All I'm trying to do is warm this epoxy up. Remember, epoxy loves heat. It doesn't like too much heat, but it loves more. As you warm this up, you're going to see spots where you have no epoxy. There, there, there. You have got to have epoxy all over this cup. If you do not, you're going to get little fish eyes from your alcohol inks, not your epoxy. Okay? You do get it from epoxy too. I don't want to make that seem like you won't because you will. Um, and alcohol inks, it doesn't matter if you have too much epoxy where it does with glitter cups. Remember, with glitter cups, you want minimal epoxy and a lot of glitter. Minimal epoxy, a lot of glitter. Alcohol cups are a little different. I don't like how dry that is. Because you can have too much and if the cup doesn't like it, it rejects it. Basically drips it down on the paper you have underneath or your silicone mat you have on underneath. It'll get rid of it if it's too much. That way you won't have a lumpy cup. Okay, so I'm going to take the rest of this, I'm going to stick a stick in it, and I'm going to set it to the side so I can show y'all something with it later. Okay, I'm going to tilt it a little bit. I'm going to take this off. Actually, I'm going to wait. Any of these bigger bubbles you see, I am going to pop those, okay, as I'm starting. Counterculture is really great. For some reason, their bubbles rise to the top and typically pop on their own. But if you add a little heat, that does speed that process up some, okay? So keep that in mind. It's a great product. I use it a good bit. I don't use fast set on molds. They don't make your molds very clear, but that's just a preference. That's just me. Don't follow what I do, okay? I love you, Freddie. <laughs> All right. Hey, y'all. Hey, LaDonna. Um, does Miss LaDonna have a nice green for a Grinch cup? I want to help her support her son in college. Um, she has amazing colors. Actually, LaDonna, if you're still on, you chime in. I don't have a son in college. Or a good green Miss Vaughn. Miss over at Micah Mania has an amazing green and a son in college. That's right. But Donna has some babies. She's got some babies. They're not babies. They're they're nine and I think the other one's fourteen today, isn't he? Fourteen or thirteen. I can't remember. But she's got some some youngins too. Epoxy's on, warmed up, got most of our bubbles popped. Let's get going, okay? I always start with my darker colors first. I am going to be using the purple with the mica in it. I was looking to see if I had another purple, a regular purple right here, and I do. Let me grab this one. Your camera might bounce a second. So this is just a passion purple. I'm going to throw it in too, okay, guys? I'll start with that one. Don't. It doesn't matter what you start with. It really doesn't. I just, for some reason, go dark to light. You're going to drop this on the cup, okay? Just like a Dalmatian. Trick to alcohol inks. If you put too much on here, your cup is going to look muddy. Okay? You want spaces in between this because, look, guys, we got more colors to add. Always drop some alcohol ink on the bottom of your cups. Always take care of the bottoms. Got to take care of the bottoms. So that's about all the purple I'm going to use. Okay? I'm going to use the, the, excuse me, sapphire blue. Dropping in holes where I don't have any alcohol ink. Don't forget your rim. Okay? I'm going to go here, and you see I'm not dropping these in any particular area. I'm going to put a little bit on the bottom so it can run down. Put one more drop there. All right, so that's all I'm going to do of that. Now, the purple that I got from, um, oh, I got alcohol ink on my hand. That's okay if you touch it, though. The um, alcohol ink I got from from Miss Christie, the sparkly, Sparkle Spirits, I'm going to put on this cup, but I always do my metallics last. And I'm also going to do a lighter blue, and I'm going to put that on last, okay? This is my favorite color. Magenta, guys. Magenta. How about Micah? You can do... He's 15. I did not know that, LaDonna. I was thinking he was 14. All right, so LaDonna got middle-aged babies. <laughs> I can't say nothing. My son, y'all, just saw is 26, 27, 94. He's... I don't even know. Mm, time does fly, I'm telling you. That was my baby. He was a NICU baby. He was sick, sick, sick. He was in kidney failure when he was born. It was bad. But look at him now. Mm, mm, mm. I got an older son who has given me three grandchildren. I got twin babies and a seven-year-old. Twin one-year-olds and a seven-year-old by him. And he is, he's born in 93, so he'd be 28 now. God, 
Y'all, I'm old. So you see, I still have some white spots, guys, okay? That's okay. You don't want to cloud this and crowd this too much. If it's too crowded, it's going to be muddy. And I'm going to explain what muddy is. This is one of the um, inks I was talking about from Sparkle Spirits from Miss Christy Taylor. She has given us a discount code for today. And you can see the difference in these. It has a lot of sparkle to it, but it gives you another shade of purple. Very, very pretty. I don't know how she makes it. I don't know if it's a mica powder. I think it's a company secret. But um, they are very pretty inks. I'm going to drop just one drop on the bottom because you don't want to make it too much. And I think I'll put one more right after this pink. So that's one of hers. I'm going to do a couple of the blue sparkle. This is also her product, just so you can see the color differences. Remember, these have a shimmer to them. I'm kind of dropping them at the end of my color drops um, or in a white spot, okay? Don't want too much because I don't want to crowd this cup again. If you have too much ink, it's going to turn out ridiculous. It's going to be muddy and it's going to be a hot mess. This is a lighter pink. Remember, it's got a shimmer. And I may not like where I've dropped all my drops, but we're going to give it a go. i got one more spot for another drop on the bottom. Okay. Now, remember my epoxy I said we were saving? The cup is not yet getting warm. It's very thin. It's working itself out. I'm going to take some of this epoxy, and I'm pouring it an undistinguished amount into the cup we put the white alcohol ink in. Okay. And I'm going to show you that in just a second. Let me get some of that poured in. And I'm pouring some, still leaving a ton of epoxy in this cup, okay? But what I'm doing, and I'm going to show you right now so you don't think I'm forgetting you. I'm going to break this popsicle stick so I can save on my craft supplies. So this is my white alcohol ink. Before I heat this, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to mix it up, make sure it's the color white that I want. If it's not, I will add more. It kind of dried a little bit. So I'm going to add... A little bit more white real quick to make it a little darker I want to put the wrong cap on that one we're not going to do that that's got purple I'll have to clean that up but I got another white right here guys this is the one I was looking for we're going to drop this in the epoxy so I can get the color white that I'm looking for I want that crystal snow white Blanco color so I'm just going to mix this up it turns the epoxy white okay can y'all see that I'm going to use this as a drizzle and then I'm going to take my embossing powder that I put in this cup, pre, you know, kind of guesstimating what I wanted to use. I'm going to show you what it looks like when you mix it up. Because remember, I'm on a time constraint. i got probably five more minutes for this stuff starts getting firm and it won't spread. So that's my embossing powder mixed in epoxy. I'm going to add some heat to this. If I feel like I need a few more drops of color, I'll add it. I've not read any messages. I apologize, guys. Okay? You can do a tumbler just like this on a black prep cup, but you have to remember you're going to have to add white to it in order for those colors to jump out. Okay, so just keep that in mind. They're beautiful, but you have to have a white or a light color to bring out the dark colors. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a section of this cup at a time. I'm going over it with a heat gun, trying to get it to run a little bit, get it warmed up with the epoxy. Once it starts running, you'll start to see this cup transform. I'm just now starting to get a little bit of a run. Takes it a minute. Now, somebody was asking me about odor earlier. So as you heat this cup, that's when you start to smell the epoxy. Is it strong to where I'm getting a headache? No. Is it definitely a smell you can smell? Yes. Um, but it's not too strong. Not like Amazing Clear Cast. Y'all, I used to use it. You see how I added too much heat and got the little white dots there? But they're fixable. This cup is fixable if you're adding glitter, okay? I want everybody to know any cup that you think is trash can be fixed and made into something. These little things are the fish eyes I was talking about because I didn't have enough epoxy. They can also be fixed, so don't freak out. But yeah, this cup's going to have some flaws. And I'm going to create one big one. I'm going to show you what happens with alcohol inks when you get them too hot in a minute. I want to probably do it at the bottom. Sometimes it's not as noticeable. But y'all be able to see. 
But all I'm trying to do is get my colors to blend a little bit and change this cup up. See if I need to add any more colors anywhere. See them where I need to fix when I use the white drizzle and the glitter drizzle. The reason I do the white separately is because when you put it on a warm cup, and like I said, I'm just trying to get these to run, guys. That's all I'm doing. I hope you can see that this cup's transforming. The drips are pulling down and changing the colors of this cup. Okay? As soon as I get all this heated up, I'm going to go back to the bottom and show you how you can mess this cup up. I do that because nobody taught me, and I want to teach you, so you're not spending as much time stripping cups as I used to. Okay? All right, let's see what we got. So we're going to do this. We're going to slide this all down. Just trying to get it to mix a little bit. I see some spots. I want to add some more color. I do not like that right there. This gives you time to kind of look at it and see where you want to add a little more heat. Get a little bit more blend. Like the purple wasn't blended very well. Okay. If you start getting too hot, you may see smoke. Can you see it? See it? You can rotate this cup with my turner. And I'm going to rotate it a different way. See if I can get a little bit more run. And I'm going to pull it off. It's getting a little bit hot. I'm going to go down here. Kind of mix my bottom up. You've got to take care of the bottoms of your cups. If you tell a customer you're going to do the bottom of the cup, you have to do the bottom of the cup. Okay? Alcohol inks and pearls. Those metallics do not like heat. They're going to tell you about it. I don't know if you can see that. That's where you get these little bubbles. The bigger runs of bubbles. Let me show you one. I had a big one right here. See these bubbles? That's from too much heat. Now this is a little dark down here for my liking. I'm going to add another drop of pink here. If it's hot, it'll run on its own. You don't have to apply any more heat. Okay. I'm just kind of filling in my little dots here. I may have to bump it with heat, but I'm not going to heat it, if that makes sense. Like heat it, heat it. So I'm just adding, I'm a preferential to, per, to pink, so I'm just adding the pink. I had one more spot I needed right there. This is where that pink ran through. It needs a little heat, but not much. And I'm going to show you how to fix all these dots. Okay? So I'm going to add just a touch. You can't add much more heat because you've already got this epoxy warm. You can see how it's running pretty well by itself. But I just don't want these to look like straight lines. I want it to look kind of, kind of running together. All right, because we're on a time constraint, this stuff is starting to get thicker. Okay? It's still real warm. My cup is still warm. This is the crazy part. Somebody's going to say, yeah, the, the shimmers are popping. I know you can see the shimmer in this because I can. But you take this white drizzle, and there is no rhyme or reason as to what you do, okay? So we're just going to take it and drizzle it over the cup. I typically do diagonal. You can do it however you want. And I'm going to show you what the white does to this cup, okay? You're not really going to be heating this cup anymore. You're going to let that white spread out over the warm tumbler because you've already ran hot, you know, got it hot. And it'll start to spread in a few minutes and go through these colors and start working. Now, you see I have no rhyme or reason as to where I'm putting them, okay? I am going to make sure I get in these spots. You can cover spots that you've messed up on. If you've got a big gap in color or you've got some bubbles in color you want to cover up, always make sure you drop a little on the bottom, let it run. It'll run through the whole center of the bottom of that cup. Now, my epoxy, guys, is getting super thick. I don't know if you can see that. So we don't have much more working time. So I'm going to get this glitter on here. Okay, a little bit of white there. Now, it looks like a hot mess. I swear it does. Got a little bit too much white in one spot. I brush over this maybe three times, just enough to get it warm. We're not trying to blend it because it'll ruin your other colors. Okay. We just want to get it warm and make it run, and we're popping a few bubbles that are in the white epoxy. Okay? My dogs are barking because there is a motorcycle outside, which is not here. I live on the main highway, and they chase mopeds and motorcycles. <laughs> I don't know if your animals do that, but my dogs hate a moped. So I'm going to hit this white right here and get it to run down through the bottom. Perfect. All right, now, the fantastic special part, okay? How often do you have this kind of tutorials? I used to do them like once in a blue moon, but I have started doing these. Um, I'm going to start doing, starting tomorrow, 
I'll be doing a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and then one on the weekend. I don't know if it'll be a Saturday or a Sunday. All I was doing there, guys, is getting my epoxy a little warmer because it's trying to set up. Okay? If it does set up, um, don't use it. Okay? So what I'm doing is just dropping the same thing. I'm taking this glitter and dropping it. Now, it looks like a hot mess, but I'm telling you, it's going to turn out fine. Somebody's going to say she has destroyed that cup. But this is where the drops... That's how I made this cup over here. No two are ever going to be the same. You know that. This looks kind of a gray color or a light blue color. But as it starts to lay on this hot epoxy, it's going to spread a little bit. Sounds like somebody might be here. I got a big glob there. I'm not happy about that one. But you see how thick this epoxy is getting. This is what I say by not workable. I'm trying to cover up any mistakes I may have made that I can cover up. Definitely right here, I don't have anything. I hear somebody in my house. I hope it's somebody I know. That's way too much, so I'm just gonna rub it, get it off, and then make sure you do the bottom of your cups. Can y'all see how thick this is? Okay, a little bit too thick to use, but I'll bump it with just a tiny bit of heat, just so I can get some color to the bottom. Let me throw that away. I'm not gonna add too much up here because glitter is heavy and it'll cause it to run and pull your color off. So all I'm gonna do is just get it warm enough to where maybe it'll run. I wish I could show you the bottom because the bottom is gorgeous. I'm just gonna add a little bit so this will space out, but it is getting set. And in just a second, I'm gonna show you the cup. Now it doesn't look pretty now, but what I'm gonna do is post a picture of this cup after we're done so you can see um, you can see what the glitter looks like once it dries. Because right now it kind of looks like a gray mist. But when it dries, that's exactly the way I did this cup, it's gonna look more like that. I promised you I was gonna make a mistake and I did make one on this one, but I wanna show you something. Can y'all see how this looks real muddy compared to how distinct these swirls are? I'm gonna spin it all the way around. See how it's muddy looking all purple with a little tiny bit of color to it, okay? That was the bottom. It's got it's got gold foil on it. Let me wipe it off so you won't see that. I had another turner over here with gold flake on it. I've got it everywhere. So I gotta clean it off. But I want to show you this. Okay. So that's the bottom. But this right here is where I added way too much heat and the colors blended instead of swirled. So if you get it too hot, that's what you're gonna wind up with on a cup instead of these. Okay? So keep in mind, too much heat is going to ruin your cup. I just noticed something. Y'all have had this cup for over two years, and I got a chip on the bottom. That's my favorite cup. I'm going to have to work on that. All right, so this cup is pretty much done. I want to show you this. This cup is so hot. So, see if I can show you this epoxy. Y'all know how long I've been working. You know how long it takes for epoxy to set up. If you've never worked with fast set and you're not comfortable, your speed isn't very high, please don't work with fast set yet, especially for glittering. But that is the epoxy. See it? <laughs> Gets very hot. Smells very, very, you can smell it now, the chemical smell. But this is that fast set epoxy. And it's been probably 15 minutes. Okay, can you see that? Not really stretching at all, guys. That's just as hard as it can be. So, Fast Set sets up in a hurry, guys, okay? This is just a version of alcohol ink. You don't have to do the glitter. You don't have to do the white drizzle. You can use different colors. You can tape it off. You can do whatever you do. I don't claim to be perfect. I just want to show you something different, let you know that this embossing powder works. I've seen a lot of people ask. They make it in several colors, and mine are in here somewhere on that wall. But they got a pink, they got blue, they got yellow, orange, clear. Not clear, but it's more of a silvery color. I just like this blue when you do it on this type of colors because it comes out really pretty. Um, they make a bunch of this different colors. It's a little pricey. It's not something you want to cover a whole cup with. But it's great for streaks of glitter. Okay? I followed you first live on the style and I love it. Turns out beautiful. This is a super easy cup. Only thing you got to remember is put a good bit of epoxy on it so you don't get dry fish eyes and don't heat it too much like I did where it smokes. <laughs> All right, so now I promised you, I can't
can't remember her name. I promise somebody else can show y'all how to clean the rim of a cup real quick. And I'm going to do that. I want y'all to be able to see. You clean the cups as you see fit. If you have a way that you're cleaning your cups and it works out great, that's the way I want you to do it, okay? I'm just get offering advice. You don't have to take it. It's just something that I've found over time that works for me, okay? So please know that. I'm not trying to change anybody's ways. I just truly want to show you something that does work. And right now I'm trying to put a razor back in a Cricut knife so I don't cut myself. All right. I have a bunch of these X-Acto knives. I'm sure everybody does. I have one that I use strictly for vinyl. I have one that I use strictly for cleaning the rim. I've got these regular X-Acto knives you buy at Walmart that I use for about everything. Very, very handy tool. Very, very dangerous. You can cut yourself. Done it. Okay? Not perfect. All right. Online is where I got mine. Somebody saying, once that dries, do you have to put a second coat of epoxy to seal? Yes, ma'am. When this is done, I put a second coat of epoxy on it to seal it. Once it's dry, I do my vinyl work if they want a name or a decal or whatever. Tattoos don't show up great on these cups. Water slides do, but you do have to use a white water slide because with the dark colors, it doesn't show up that well. Um, but And then do your final coat. Typically, alcoholics, you can get away. Let me say this. You can get away with two coats of epoxy on an alcohol tumbler if you don't do the white lines or the glitter lines. The reason you have to do a second coat is it's a little bit bumpy, and you want to smooth it out and have a very smooth surface, okay? So keep that in mind. Here is my X-Acto knife. We're going to pull up this tumbler from the other day. It's been sitting back here because, y'all, I took an 8-hour ride that turned into a 14-hour ride yesterday to go get my grandbabies some ferrets. So y'all know I've got a ton of animals here. I had four dogs. i got three dogs. i got a cat. I've got fish. i got a BB parrot. I got a rabbit. <laughs> the rabbit's still here. Oh, um, she's just not in the kitchen no more. And then I got two ferrets now with a cage. This is, it looks like a condominium. So, um, I made an eight-hour trip to Tennessee from South Carolina where I live. It was four hours there and four hours back, and it took me 14 hours. So, you can tell I got lost in the process. So, um, I didn't do any cups yesterday. This has been sitting on the turner. All right, guys. So, this is what we did the other day. I'm going to show you this without dropping stuff on my thing. Raggedy mess, right? Okay. Inside, it's got epoxy in it, all that. Okay. This is what I'm trying to clean up. So, if I got dogs under my feet. If this cup was still on the turner, and I know that it's dry, this is what I do. You do not have to do this. So, imagine it's still on the turner. Okay. Some people seal. Oh, somebody's been in my room. Imagine this was still on the turner. Some people will take this and seal it because they don't want glitter to move on the cup or you're going to add different colors of glitter and you don't want it to move. I don't seal any of my glitter cups. I never have. I've tried it once. I wasn't crazy about it. It kind of made my epoxy that was there look um, foggy. I guess that's the best word for it. But I take a little brush. You're going to be able to see this glitter fall. Can anybody see it? I don't know if you can see that. I don't want to do it over my other cup because it'll fall. But this glitter, if you go around this cup and just brush with a Dollar Tree brush, I had a dollar for like eight of them, okay? Once I'm done brushing, I'll take and feel my edges and see if any of this glitter, especially chunky, has made a huge bump. Now, I have no second layer of glitter, y'all, or no epoxy. This is straight off the first epoxy coat, glitter coating. I'm going to show you something else, too. All right, so I'm going to brush it one more time. That just removes any excess glitter that is popping up or sticking up, so I'll have to do minimal sanding. Does it still have good coverage? Absolutely. There's no, no spots in that. But I just saw something. I threw this cup on there the other day to do this tutorial, and I see a mistake. Hmm, so I'm going to show you my mistake. I'm not too shy. I'll show you what I did. Hmm. Now, I heat the tip of my X-Acto knife up, just to get it a little bit warm, especially on certain epoxies that you use. Some cure harder than others. If you ever had a cup that felt kind of soft, it's basic. Now, if it's soft versus sticky, it could be the type of epoxy you're using, okay? So I heat that enough that it's warm, but not scorching. I put it at an angle. Hold on just a second. I put it at an angle about like this, okay? And then I bring it around. Now, somebody's going to say, why do you put it at an angle? So I'm going to pull this off first once you see how much it gets off. Okay? Basically, I'm just cleaning up that rim. 
And then I'm going to tell you why I do it now in just a second. Let me pay attention so I don't wind up having to go to the become uh, secret stories of life in the ER. But see how much stuff is coming off? Wind up and lose a finger while I'm trying to teach y'all something. That'd be a real good story to tell. You know that girl does live tutorials. She cut her finger off while she was trying to show us how to clean a cup. But anyway, uh, but <laughs> I have to tickle myself sometimes, y'all, you know. Just have to. So, I've had an interesting weekend. While I'm going around, I'm going to tell you this little story. Y'all know I had to go to Tennessee, and I went on top of this mountain called Coker Mountain. It's a beautiful mountain. It used to be a coal mining town. I learned that when I was in the store because I was lost. There's only one way off the mountain, and that's straight back, turn around, go back down the mountain. Well, I went in. I had not had cell phone service for an hour and a half. So, it kind of takes you back to those childhood days when you had the rotary phone on the wall and you used to have to do that and wait for it to come back around. And you had the long cord so you could go to your room and have a private conversation because if you had a short cord, you had to stand over top of your washer and dryer and talk. But anyway, I walked in the store and I was like, do you have Wi-Fi up here? Can I have your Wi-Fi code so I can FaceTime somebody? Because I have no signal. And he goes, what Wi-Fi? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not making fun of nobody. I'm just saying this man. I thought I was country. He's like, what's Wi-Fi? And I said, where you hook to the internet where you can do things on your phone. Well, we don't have cell phone. I got a business phone and I swear to goodness he had one of them phone numbers that you do this. And you have to wait for it to come back around. It was hanging on the wall with about a 20 foot cord on it and it was all wrapped around and curled. If y'all are of my age, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But anyway, I had to call the man I was going to get the ferrets for because he thought I wasn't coming because I didn't have no signal and didn't get his message. And I got back to going down the road, and I was thinking about things that we need to teach our grandchildren, that everything's not automatic, okay? It's not automatic, because what happens is, we lost a remote in the couch one time, and the kids couldn't turn the channel to the TV because there was no remote. So I said, if you go up to the TV and you push these little buttons, it's how you... those kids thought that I was magical. <laughs> like, magical, y'all. All right, so listen, back to this. All right, that's just my little two-cent two cent story. My stories aren't great all the time, but it was hilarious because I didn't realize that people still lived somewhere. He didn't have cable TV. Like, no cable TV? You can't watch Dancing with the Stars or The Voice or none of that? All right. So, I just go around the top now. I'm back at a flat edge. I'm going around to remove anything that I see there that I can get off, whether it be paint or epoxy or a few strands of little glitter. I'm going to do inside the rim. Somebody's going to say, does this scratch, scratch your cup? It does make a little mark, but it's not significant enough to notice that this cup has been scratched, okay? Because you're doing it in a smooth surface. Last thing I do, remember, one coat of epoxy and I did glitter. Nothing else has been done to this. No final coat, okay? I take a sandpaper that's rather rough. So I'm going to use like a 180 grain. Mine on the top is, on the bottom is 180. And I'm going to put it somewhere where you don't have it fly all over your cups. And all I'm going to do is go across the cup like this, okay? And then I'll sand just a little bit at an angle where I shave. Remember how I tilted my X-Acto knife? Now, let me tell you why I did that. You can clean the inside with acetone. That's what I do when I get ready to deliver. You don't have to do that now because you may still get a little residual on your next coat of epoxy to make this smooth. But I want to show you the difference, okay? And why I do those things that I do. I see a piece right here. So I missed something right here somewhere. But I'm, I'm doing it kind of blindly in the dark, okay? The inside still has some stuff. But y'all, this is smoother. Now remember, there's no top coat of epoxy. The reason I clean my cup now is it has to be sealed, okay? If you don't, if you put another coat of epoxy on this, you've got it smooth. You're getting ready to decal it. You do the decal. Hold on. I can't make spit. I'm so sorry. You get ready to decal it. And you clean your rim. Or you, you go ahead and epoxy. You finished your cup and you're like, it's beautiful. Now all I got to do is clean the rim, sand the bottom, and I'm good to go. The reason I do all that now, and I'll even hit the bottom sometimes after I do my second coat of epoxy before I do the third. You have to seal this back. If you're cleaning your cup after you're done epoxying and you're almost ready to deliver it to a customer, you have broken the seal. So that means when they go to hand wash these cups, because they can't be put in a dishwasher, they hand wash, they get water up under that seal where you have cut it away, and then this will start peeling and flaking later over time. It might not happen in the first week they have it, but it will happen because I used to clean my cups when I got ready to deliver until I 
watch more tutorials and read and read and read. And then I had two customers call me and say their cup is peeling and chipping at the top. And when I got it back, I looked and that's exactly what happened. Water got up under my cuts, got up under to the base coat of paint that I had on because the paint was good. It was just everything above it. I broke the seal. So clean your cup rims before you do your final coat or at least before you do your second coat because that way this is sealed over. When you rub that epoxy and you bring it over that seal. Now somebody's going to say, well, then I get dots of epoxy back up on top, but this looks fine. You just take this and pop those off and you are not disrupting your seal. You don't want to go back in there and cut this again like that because if you do, you're going to break the seal. Okay? That's how I do it. Doesn't mean it's perfect. Whatever. I'm, but please take Please, please do it any way you feel has been working for you. On this cup also, after I do my next coat of epoxy, I've got the seal where it's smooth, where I could do a decal or a name. On that second coat, I'll take the sandpaper and I go all the way around the bottom. I'm not going to do it now, so if I do it now, I scuff the color and can take it back down to the base coat. I don't want to do that. But I will bump this with a little bit of sandpaper because chunky is super hard to get flat. If anybody ever rubbed your cup, you got a lot of rough spots here. After you do your second coat of epoxy, then rub it real good with some sandpaper and do your third coat and it comes back shiny. Same with up here. If I had some chunky sticking out, it's just one or two places, I'll sand it down, clean it real good, and then put my third coat of epoxy on and all those bumps will be covered. You don't have to do a fourth and fifth coat, okay? I hope hmm, the ones with the black plastic. Yep, somebody reminded me I had to do the black plastic. Let me show you what I did on this cup. I grabbed a cup for a tutorial because I was kind of late and I wanted to do a tutorial and I had so many things I wanted to share. I grabbed the cup and look. Anybody see? I already had this base painted at some point. I don't know what I was thinking, but that is, let's see if I got one right here. The silver tab on the back of the bottom of the hog cups. Now either I didn't paint it or that's the opal glitter over top of it and it's just shining through, but it looks like I didn't paint it. So this cup I can keep for me, or I can cover that spot with a round decal at the bottom. Whether I don't put my names on my cups because they know where they buy them, and I usually stick a business card inside the cup with the care instructions. But I could put a decal on this, like a big snowflake, and cover that up if I wanted to. But that's going to drive me crazy because I know I'm OCD. So these little silver things, I'm just going to show you real quick because we were talking about the Ozark tumblers. So I'm going to show you this real quick in case you're too scared. This is just like a silver cap. I have a flathead screwdriver that I use in my craft room. This is actually a sticker. Some of them are metal. I just take them off and then I'll paint over top of that because this will come off after you, sometimes or to lift when you put your epoxy on. So I always take those off and then somebody wanted to see something else. I'm going to grab a cup because I do want you to see this. Please don't leave. This may be useful for you, but I do have to get up in front of you and hope I don't fall. Hold on. Oh. Yeah, baby. I got you one. Woo. Let's try not to fall in here. I'm hoping you can't see the floor. My grandbaby was in here the other day, the one-year-old, and destroyed this place. All right. This is my object of desire today to clean. This is the Ozark Tumbler. 24 ounce. Came from Walmart. Okay. They have these things on the bottom of them. Make me crazy. It's usually got a plastic piece over top of it. All it is is a non-skid surface for people who use cups just like this and don't decorate. If you try, I do not have one. I used to keep one in here as a reminder. If you try to epoxy and glitter over this or alcohol ink or anything, you're still going to see this little ridge because this is not completely flush. Can you see that? It's got like an eighth of an inch or something or one thirty seconds of an inch that sticks out. You've got to take these off because it will show, okay? So this is the way I do it. Sometimes it comes off perfect and sometimes you get a little chip, but you have to take them off or it's going to show. And I just don't want your customers to be unhappy. So I usually take a heat gun. This is something else I was going to tell you. I started out using a hair dryer, guys. You don't have to go out and buy a bunch of expensive stuff. As long as it provides heat, you'll find over time that something that provides hotter heat works better. Okay, I can't show you on this, but I'm going to show you a couple different things that you can use to pop bubbles or apply heat to your cups. But if you are just starting out and all you have is a hair dryer, use your hair dryer. Don't let somebody talk you into a $50 heat gun. 
you can go to Harbor Freight. This actually is an embossing gun. I bought it years ago. I've had this thing for like 10 years. It's got epoxy all over it. This thing's super warm. Don't touch it. I find me a good spot. I stick my screwdriver under here. I try to catch the hard plastic piece because, I'm going to show you this so you'll know how many layers is to this. Let me get this up. What this is doing is heating up the glue. Oh, it's coming off, so I'm not going to be show you. It's got a rubber cap, and underneath that is a plastic cap. Right now, I just have the rubber cap, but it actually was trying to lift with the plastic, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and pop it in one, one pop. Yep. All right. Give me a second, because I, I did get it warm enough. Y'all, these things will break into a million pieces, so you got to be kind of careful with them. I'm going to lift up with this. I hope you can see this. I'm going to put it back up high for you in just a second. Let me get this under the rubber. And then I'm going to try and lift up with my screwdriver if I don't mess it up. Well, they're not this difficult, but see, I'm trying to show y'all how to do it. All right, I'm going to pull the plastic off. The rubber, excuse me. Well, it came off. So this is what happens. This is attached to this, okay? It can come off in pieces if it wants because it leaves a clean ridge. But what it does do is it leaves an indention. This will fill up with your epoxy and your glitter. Don't worry about that indention that goes in, okay? So I broke this one. I'm going to try and get this out in one piece. But please put your hand over top of it in case these little pieces break off like that and hit you in the forehead. That's, it's done it to me. I'm going to add a little bit more heat just to get this piece off in one piece. Because it will show through, I promise you. I've done several cups. They're doing these to the 30 ounces now. So check your 30 ounces if you're getting them from Walmart. Because I guarantee, so I've just got one piece left, okay? This extra residual glue, you can kind of scrape it off. Typically, if you get it bumped up, I'm going to show you how it comes off without breaking it. Can you see that? It's kind of hard. And just pull it and it peels right off. Okay, and you'll be left with your plain black cup. So I just got this one piece. I'm going to go ahead and pop it off for giggles because if I don't, I'll forget and then I'll make this cup with one dot of black plastic on it. Okay. It does make a tink sound. Alright. So that's basically cleaned except for the glue. So take that off and make sure you get your glue off. I got one big chunky piece of glue right here and I'll get that off with a little bit of heat. And then the rest of it just kind of peels off. And remember, this indention is not going to matter once you apply your glitter. If you're taping off your cups, then you're going to have an indention. Okay, just keep that in mind. But I do mine top to bottom. The code for the shimmer ink didn't work. Give her a minute on that code and make sure you spelt it the way she did. Um, Judy is saying she can never get hers off. Apply some heat. Even if you use a hair dryer, it loosens up that glue that's on there. If you're a fanatic, and I started doing this, but I'm going to tell you it's more trouble than it's worth because I have done it. I got these off in one piece without ripping the rubber and ripping the bottom or breaking it. You can do these with, who else has one? Bubba tumblers. Bubba tumblers have a bottom also. If you take it off, Bubba tumblers are easier to get the bottoms off. If you take it off in one piece, put it to the side. After you do your decoration, you can always E6000 these back on if you want the rubber at the bottom. One thing I will tell you is because you've epoxied, this is going to stick out a whole lot more because if you decorate the bottom, after you put your epoxy on, it's going to stick up like that. So I don't, I got where I didn't put mine back on. So see, that's pretty high. And sometimes you can't get them exactly even. They'll be a little wobbly when you set them on the table. But if you want it back on, you can do it. I have done it. I just wasn't happy with the aesthetics to it. So I quit doing it. All right, let's see if there's anything here at the bottom. Can you cover the plastic ones? that are not removable. I haven't seen those, Amy. I apologize. And Christy is saying that it's capital T B L R L O V E. That's the discount code for this group for her um, shimmery alcohol inks if you like those, okay? All right, so Sheila's saying that she, she said that's what I'm doing. I'm wondering if you're either leaving them on or taking them back off, I'm not sure. But you can do it either way, guys. Don't let me don't let me change up how you do things. I'm just showing you ways that work for me. So like I said, I think we've covered a good bit of stuff. I think we've dropped off a few people. How many ounces per layer do you do? And is that a 20 ounce? This is a 20 ounce tumbler. And if I'm doing a glitter cup only, 
I will probably put 7.5 milliliters total. Or if that's too hard to split up for you, just do 10 milliliters total. You can do five milliliters, two and a half of each, and it'll cover this cup. You just gotta add heat, if you're doing glitter. With glitter, you want very little epoxy and a lot of glitter. That You want your glitter to appear dry to your cup. So when you get done doing epoxy and glitter, you want it to look clear, I mean like dry looking, like this. I'm going to show you a cup that got messed up because I was having some of my grandchildren help. This is a glitter cup, but everywhere you see shiny, see how this appears dry? That's what it's supposed to look like. This whole cup is a lot of glitter. I mean a lot of epoxy. It should not look like this. Let me find another dry. Look at, that. Look at all this epoxy it came through. Where's it at? Right there. See that big bubble? Look at that big bubble. Right here, see how it appears dry? That's what you want your cup to look like, okay? Yes, I've done a fabric tumbler. I actually make some out of blue jeans. Um, I did one out of a canvas bag that we had from a car show, and we never used it, so I cut it up and made a cup out of that. I do every type of cup. The only fabrics I don't have good luck with and I don't have any handy is to come with the Lycra material in it. I've done t-shirt cups. T-shirt cups are probably my number one seller. People will want to buy them for a memorial shirt. My dad wore this shirt all the time. I'd love to have it turned into a tumbler. Can you do that? And I'll cut out the section that means the most, whether it's a monogrammed name on the pocket or you've got um, a Harley picture on the back of a t-shirt, you know, and I tell them what size would look best and then we make, make them. Let's see, I just did one and I don't think it came out right. Can you tape? I'm kind of reading through the comments, guys, see if I can answer anything. Do you always use epoxy before glitter or do you ever use an adhesive? I have several adhesives. I've got the Loctite spray. I've got the Super 77, which is made by Scotch. Um, that's the Loctite spray that I use. I'm trying to pull out stuff that I used so you'll know that I have used stuff. I've used hairspray before to put my glitter on when I was in a pinch and first starting out and it worked. Um, Mod Podge, you know, there's several kinds of Mod Podge, but I've used Mod Podge. This is the devil's glue. <laughs> I do use it for t-shirt tumblers, but I try not to use it for anything else unless I'm doing something um, like a peekaboo and I happen to tear some of the glitter out. I'll go back and Mod Podge and try and cover that area with glitter if I have a mistake, okay? Somebody's, um, can we see a denim one? I don't have it. I actually sold that one, but I got a picture on my thing. I basically cut out the pocket and the name brand. It was Levi's, so it has the Levi's tag on it with the pocket and the way the thread is on the pocket. And then I epoxied it. And on the other side, we put a name. Um, favorite epoxy? What about patches? I think a, a patch tumbler would be cool. Like get a bunch of different kinds of patches and Mod Podge them on there. Just make sure you cover them real good and they stay seated and lay flat. I think that would be amazing. If you do that, I want to see it because that might be my next, my next personal tumbler. Um, favorite epoxy? Depends on what I'm doing. I love the Artisan. I love Counterculture's um, Medium Viscosity. I love, um, what else do I love? I love ALE is crystal clear when it dries. Those long, long time setting epoxies are great for molds. If you're doing molds, and I've done a few, I've, the kids helped me make one. I got one on the floor, guys. I know this one Let me show you this. So, this. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. We made, this is actually a trinket box cover. Now I'm going to explain something about fast set. If you think you're going to make some coasters, or this is a trinket box, so the back side of it has like a lip that sits down in type of a, a little jewelry box, okay? If you think you're going to make a coaster out of a fast set, this thing's going to be super flexible. You'll be able to bend it. You'll be able to make it um, warp. It warps. Um, it does eventually get hard, but it takes a much longer to cure than the regular epoxies do. The ones that take six to seven hours to cure. In my house, I usually use a heat source in the bedroom or um, a dryer if I need something done quicker and I'm using this the long, the long time drying stuff. But this is not going anywhere, okay? Crystal clear. I don't know if you can see the shine with the window, but I've got a ton of glitter in this. Um, but these, I love molds, but I like the, the epoxy that takes a long time to cure. That's just personal, okay? Thank you. This is what I'm doing. Hey, hon, sometimes you have to clear your cachet to use coupons. 
All right, somebody's giving you some advice about the um, ordering the micas. And those of you who may have joined late, I'm just going to show you what the bottles look like. Give you her name one more time. Remember, though, we have Childs and Childs glitter that we use. Okay, this was some of their glitter. Y'all look them up. They're at childsandchilds.co. Um, we have some Hero glitter by Miss LaDonna White. She comes in bottles now, but this is just for an example. This is her Nova. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful silver. And this is Raymond. Is it Raymond? Raven. Excuse me, Raven. Purple, beautiful purple. It's got a little bit of a um, holographic look to it. Not holographic, but it's got, it changes colors a little bit. She had, I have so many of these guys' glitter, it's ridiculous. Also, I want to throw a shout out to Miss Joy because I used some of her glitter earlier, but I'm going to go back and do a whole cup tutorial with some of her stuff. But she is at Glitzology. It's got a dolphin. And if you pull up Glitzology, she'll have a dolphin icon. This is Tropical Waters. It's a chunky mix. These are just a few of hers, okay? Cotton candy with a purple, I mean, a pink hue to it, but it's an opal, okay? And lastly, but not least, we had um, who we used today in this cup, which was Sparkle Spirits. It's Christy Taylor. Okay. And this is her bright blue. I got epoxy on this one. This is Aphrodite Purple. And then I use a Pavarotti Pink today, too. Remember, you got to shake these up. They got sediment in the bottom. They have a BB in them. Okay. If y'all have any questions, okay, what's the site for the shimmering inks? She put it up. I know that I, I personally have ordered from her. I see her in person, um, used her webpage. She's an amazing person. She's actually used to do what I did. We were both scrub nurses back in the day. But it's called Sparkling Spirits. And I think she put a link up while she was on here. I didn't know she'd be on here today. But I wanted to use the shimmering. She These things are really, really nice. It's kind of like doing your own at home with the mica powders. But hers have a prettier shimmer than ones I've made. <laughs> Just saying. And she does every, you know, makes them herself. So, her and her husband. Great company. Great lady. Super sweet. Um, if y'all have any questions, can we see the bottom of the alcohol ink cup? Let me see if I can. I don't think I might be able to get it off. Let me try and get it off without touching it. It's pretty much dry, but you still can leave fingerprints in it. Oh, and my tumbler thing is super, super. You all see that? Without too much glare. I got a lot of glare in here today. So my glitter didn't go all the way through, but you got all your colors mixed in there, okay? Typically I try to get a run where the glitter kind of swirls as it's turning, but it started getting hard on me. But this cup I can touch, but I could press hard enough and leave a fingerprint, so I don't want to press too hard. I'll try and slide it back in here and let it spin its little turn. But it will get another cut of epoxy before. Let's see. Mm, what's the white across there? The white was actually, if the, if I had used regular epoxy, this cup would have turned out more like the one I have on here. The facet sets up so quick, it didn't melt and blend in. This is what it would have looked like had I used a regular epoxy that takes about six hours to set up. All these lines that you see coming through the pinks and the blues and the purples, that's what these white lines do if you use something that you have more working time with. Same with the glitter. The lines of glitter are starting to come more clearer now. I think you can see. I'm going to close these curtains real quick because I want to give you a good look at this. I don't want to leave you hanging. So give me a second. Take some of the glare off and see if I can show you the glitter without blinding you. Let's see. Can y'all see that glitter coming around or is that too much light still? You can kind of see it coming through. But had this cup been a little warmer... I got it as hot as it needed to be. If I'd have got it a little bit warmer and this was spinning, it would have turned out more like this because I used a regular epoxy. And remember, that's embossing powder that I use today. You can use the Diamond Dust by Mica Mania. You can use mica powders in these cups if you wanted to. If you don't like the crisp alcohol ink look, you can do mica powders, okay? But there's a Diamond Dust. I have another one that I use of hers, and I don't see it right now. Um, it's a Mica Mania product. And I usually have it sitting right there. But remember, I've had grandbabies in here. and I'm going to have to make this room off limits to grandbabies. But if y'all have, I just want to say you're amazing. And you are one of the first lives that didn't bore me and kept me entertained. I just want to thank you for all the good info. I'll be watching your videos every time. Thank you, Heather. I appreciate that. Okay. 
I really do. You don't know. I do this because I want to help people. I had nobody to talk to. You should have seen some of my first cups. Oh, my goodness. And I've saved them. I wouldn't sell them. <laughs> so, I appreciate that so much. Do you have a taping video? If you're talking about the ones where the lines go all the way around, or are you talking about one to start a cup initially? Amy, tell me exactly what you're talking about, okay? Hey, Miss Linda. All right, if I can do anything for y'all, send me a private message. I try to respond to all private messages within an hour. Sometimes it takes me a little bit of time to go back and answer everybody's questions in here. Sometimes you'll see that I'll, I'll laugh at a comment or say like to a comment. I can't do it for everybody because they shut me down on Facebook and won't let me talk for like 24 hours. And that's really, really hard. But if you need something, you give me a give me a message, okay? Can you use Fast Set as a final coat? They say that Fast Set in the blue container, which is what I showed you a second ago when we first started, this can be used as a final coat, okay? They're saying it can be. They suggest you don't use it for molds, which I already told you that. This one, they preferred that you did not use it for a top, uh, top coat. It does have UV protectant, but not as much as this one does. This has seven times more. So I have talked to the people who manufacture this, and that is what they told me. This fast set is a game changer. KS Resin has a fast set. Um, Counterculture has a lickety split. I said, Ooh, I don't want to tell you wrong. Somebody's got one that's clickety split. It's a fast set. Um, so there's some others out there. But the most important is your UV protector. I'm going to show you a bottle of something. I'm not going to give you the name of it. I'm going to do this for personal information. I just have to find it. But I do want you to see something before I let you go. Let me find it. Maybe give me a second. Okay. I'm not going to tell you the name of the company. Okay. Can anybody see the color of that? All I'm going to say is this is epoxy with no UV protectant. And it's been sitting here maybe two months. It's not in the direct sunlight. It's actually on the floor, hid back in the shade, not even in a light really in the room. It's kind of in the back of a rack. But without UV protectant, this is what it looks like. Versus this is something in a FIFA bottle that has UV protectant. I'm just going to give you an idea, but I'm not going to tell you the name of the company. Okay? All right. Um, KS Resin. Yes. Lickety Split. It's amazing. It's ama oh, I love KS Resin. Their stuff's amazing, too. I love ALE. Y'all, there's nobody I really don't like. I've used Amazing Clear Cast when I first started because you could find it at Walmart and you could find it at Hobby Lobby, and I was scared to death to invest too much. So I started with Amazing Clear Cast, and I loved it. I didn't have a reason to really change, but at the time, I wanted to try everybody's products. I, if I, My goal was to help people and not really sell as many cups as I was selling in the beginning. I love to sell a cup every now and then. I'll definitely make them for family and friends, and if somebody wanted one, I'd make you one. It's not that I hesitate from it, but my goal is to really teach people, and you can't teach people if you haven't tried it. You know, I needed to be able to try all these products and try them in different ways just so I could tell you. You know, these products are out there and you can work with them. Somebody was telling me about fish eyes. And I don't know where I did with this. There's a product by Counterculture called No More Dimples. Amazing. I'd never heard of it. But I was like, all right, the only way you're going to get fish eyes is if you have oils on your hands, dirt's on your hands, something falls on your cup, too little epoxy and it gets too hot, too little epoxy, period. I don't have any fish eyes here. Very shocked. But I do have the alcohol ink. Let me show you the little, the ones I didn't cover. I think I just saw one. Right, nope, that's white. Right there. I have a little fish eye and a little fish eye there, but that was from the alcohol ink. The cup was too dry. So you'll get fish eyes, but this, you don't get fish eyes. It's amazing, okay? Um, how do you get lickety split not to be tacky? I mixed even amounts. Could be the humidity in your home, um, if it was equal amounts, or it may have needed a little bit more time, or your um, room was a little bit too, too cool. My house is 60 degrees, so I know it is. What kind is the Blue Bottle Facets? Counterculture DIY. You can find them at ccdiy.com. Great company. Great company. Okay, do you have a video from start to finish for a glitter tumbler? I tried to make one. I just did one a couple days ago. If you go to the top in the search board and type in Bridget Hicks Reese, it'll pop up all my tutorials or comments that I've made in the group. Or you can go down below the announcements, kind of scroll a little bit. There's little tabs, and there's a tab that says Bridget Hicks Reese Tutorials. I try to move everything over into that to make them a little easier to find. 
You can also go on YouTube and type in Bridget Hicks Reese, and all the tutorials I've done for this group are on there. I don't have any extras, so I'm not trying to get you to subscribe because of whatever you do with YouTube. I only moved everything from this group to there just so you can see them, okay? Nope, this glitter's not moving no more. I'm gonna be honest with you, am I happy with this cup? It's cute, but I'm not real happy with it. I really wanted to do another one like this, and my mistake was using a facet epoxy. It just set up too quick. This cup would have turned out completely different had I used um, KS Resin or ALE or this DIY Epoxy Artisan, something that takes a while to, to set up, it would have turned out totally different. So epoxies do matter. So just keep that in mind, okay? Will I keep it? I'll probably keep it for a sample cup and show people, you know, different things that you can do with them. But, the, you know, typically I would have rather it turned out like that one, okay? All right, I'm glad I could teach y'all a little something. Remember, don't get the watercolor inks like I did. Even if they're on sale, you can use them for different crafts. Um, remember, metallics don't like too much heat. You got to shake them up. Shake all your, all your alcohol inks. But this just gives you an idea on how to do those, okay? Remember, Monday, tomorrow, we're coming back. We're going to do a fall tumbler. We're going to use a bunch of fall colors. I've got colors from a couple different companies. I'm going to try and give out more than one shot out at a time. But we're going to use different size um, double-sided tape. We're going to apply this all over our cup. Um, I'll probably have half the cup done when we start and then show you how to finish off the second half because this is a little time consuming. And then I'll show you how you apply the glitter to certain places and we'll finish up a glitter fall cup. Something really, really pretty. Okay? All right, guys. I have enjoyed being with you. I hope you've learned something. And if you hadn't, just know that I love you coming in and spending some time. Okay? Remember, we all believe the same. Love each other. If you don't know somebody and you're scared to shake their hand because of COVID, give them a fist bump and elbow. Tell them they're beautiful. You like their tie. You'd be surprised what a difference it makes in their life. Bye, y'all.